Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is forgiving from the heart. People loved not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they loved the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, in the parable of the treasure and the pearl, we learned about the price Jesus paid to purchase salvation for both Jews and Gentiles. We discovered that the pearl of great price is the church of Jesus Christ, open to all the people of the world. Just as a pearl is formed inside an oyster, through the suffering caused by irritation, so the church was formed through the piercing and wounding the body of our Savior. The Apostle John had a vision of the elders in heaven singing a new song saying to Jesus, You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 7. Preceding today's parable, we find Peter in a conversation with Jesus about forgiving people who have offended him. Peter asked, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Since the rabbis taught the people that they only needed to forgive three times, Peter thought he was being generous. He was in for a big surprise with the answer that he heard. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven, Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, without giving Peter a chance to respond. Jesus told another one of his famous parables. Jesus said to him, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave his debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. And so his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. And he refused, and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and went and reported to their master all that had happened. Then their master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. Jesus concluded by saying, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 through 35. What a shocking story. To fully understand the impact this story had on those who first heard it, it's helpful to have some background information about how life was during Roman times. We read that the man owed 10,000 talents. What is a talent? In this case, it's not a musical gift or something like that. A talent is a bar or ingot of precious 
metal, either of silver or gold. A talent usually weighed between 60 and 80 pounds. According to Josephus, the total imperial tax on the region was only 800 talents of silver. So owing 10,000 talents is an impossible debt to imagine. When Jesus said that man owed 10,000 talents, the people knew immediately that the story was a parable and not a real person. No one could loan or borrow more than 10 times the national tax on the region. When the man got on his knees and asked for patience, promising to repay everything, the people knew that that was not possible. Then in another stunning twist, we learn that the man was forgiven and released. Upon being released, he met a friend who owed him 100 denarii. Now, one denarius was approximately one day's wage. So 100 denarii was just over three months' income for the average laborer. The man who was forgiven millions in debt could not find it in his heart to forgive someone who owed him a fraction of what he was forgiven. What is this parable all about? In this parable, we discover that Jesus is the king. The greater debtors are unbelievers needing to be forgiven of their sins. The lesser debtor are believers needing to forgive others. Jesus concluded his parable by saying that it's not how many times we forgive that counts, but whether or not we have forgiven people from our heart. Sometimes we need to keep forgiving people until our words move from our head to our heart. If we can do that immediately, then we are blessed and free. You know if you're just saying words without meaning, you might need to keep forgiving until you are able to forgive from your heart. Forgiving from our heart is the one that counts before God and sets us free. It releases us from growing a bitter root against a brother or sister who has offended us. It is the Spirit of God who helps us learn how to forgive from our heart. We can learn to forgive from our heart because we have been forgiven so much by God. Many times people are afraid to give because it feels like that if they forgive the perpetrator of the evil they experienced, then that person will get away with what he or she has done. It's good to remember that no one ever gets away with anything. The eye of God sees all and knows all. And when we forgive to release people and place them into God's hands, he is the only one who knows what is best to do, and he will do what only he can do. We like to talk to people about learning to forgive selfishly. What do we mean by that? God wants to bless us with a life that is free from bitterness, resentment, and revenge. Forgive selfishly. Forgive from your heart. Because when you do, you will be the one receiving the blessing from God. Remember these powerful words spoken by Jesus. If you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. We like to teach about three levels of forgiving. We begin by forgiving as an act of our will. When we forgive as a choice in obedience to God's word, forgiving flows out of our head. We are doing it in obedience to God. When we forgive from our soul, wounds that happen to us have the opportunity to begin to heal. And sometimes we hear people say, time heals all wounds. Well, time might change our perspective but it does not heal our wounds. When we forgive from our heart, the pain of our memory is healed by Jesus and our heart is set free. Forgiving often results in more emotional healing and in many times physical healings 
takes place as well. Pastor Margaret and I have seen people receive physical healing the moment they forgave someone from their heart. We have seen deaf ears healed without the person telling us they had hearing loss. We forgave someone who hurt them and their ears opened. And as you listen to this message, who is the Spirit of God brought to your mind that you need to forgive at a deeper level? If your wound still feels open, it's an indication that there's more to forgive than you might have realized. I pray that God gives you the courage to forgive the one who has offended you from your heart today. Perhaps you live in a culture where people don't forgive. The people around you live to take revenge. If that's you, then this parable is especially important for you to understand. The point the story made as he told this parable is that the man could never repay the king. After forcing his servant or forgiving his servant for a massive debt he owed, the king wanted the servant to show mercy to the one who owed him, much less than he did. This is what Jesus did for us. He took the debt we had towards God for all the sins we've committed against him. Jesus paid for our sins by dying for us on the cross in our place. Jesus is willing to completely forgive those who ask him to forgive him. And now because we have been forgiven, we can forgive others. Every now and then people write to me who are a lot like the man who believed that he could pay off his debt. They write to me and tell me, if I do enough good deeds, then God will accept me in the end. But like the man who could never repay 10,000 talents of debt, we could never earn enough by our good deeds to enter heaven with our own goodness. That is why we need Jesus to forgive us and pay the price we could not pay for ourselves. I invite you to ask Jesus to forgive you for all the sins you have committed. Accept Jesus as your Savior today. I want to take a few moments and pray for people. Thank you, God, for speaking to people today about the power of forgiving others. By your Holy Spirit, empower people to forgive at a level they've never forgiven before. As you forgive, I release a healing into your life. Be healed from emotional wounds and physical problems that you did not know were associated with not forgiving people from your heart. Eyes and ears be opened by the power of Jesus. Joint pain go in the name of Jesus. Healing, come and wash over your body. Feel the joy of releasing people into the hands of Jesus. God knows much better what to do than you or I, even if we tried to take revenge. Be free today by forgiving. Trust Jesus to forgive you and let his forgiveness flow through your life to people. If you decided to follow Jesus or were healed while I prayed, write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.